Hi and welcome back. This is Chris over at 3D Palace and we're working still on our portal way, doorway, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the next part we've been kind of getting ready to work on is down here where we have this portal rear mass area. And I don't mean that as in, oh god, we'll go on to mass, it's going to be grand. No, as in it's a large area. Although mass would be lovely. God, I love mass. So, what we're going to do is just bring that back there, so we've got this small area. That way we can always build the wall where we need it. And then over here, I'm going to close up this area just using the bridge tool. I'm using interactive bridging tool, I better turn off any selections I've got. Interactive bridging tool not playing nice with other pieces. Okay, next. Just looking at what I'm doing here. Now, I was originally going to connect that piece to this piece, but I'm not now. I prefer the kind of mausoleum style look that we've got going on. Rebuild the piece that's missing. Oh, you hun. Where's it gone? Does undo even work on this bloomin' machine? Is it a Windows 7 failing or something? bridge. You know, I don't think I've got any undo on this at all. Eesh. Okay, what I'm going to do is just build out here, just in case I need it later. So I'll just do a quick extrude here as well. Never can tell when you might need it. And now I've got this part here to play with. So I'm going to do a bevel. Just a small one. Then I'm going to insert it a little bit. Then I'm going to bring it in like that. It's all about messing with the shapes. It's all about coming up with something nice. I want this one slightly lower than this one. And a lovely question from Rob, who works at a home for mentally challenged people down in Nottinghamshire, asking if you can have some poser tutorials. I will, of course, make poser tutorials if people want them. It's not as if it's especially difficult. Set the boob modifier to plus 20. Set the crap hair modifier to plus 3. and then sit in your underpants. And then bring that up like so. So now we've got this quite nice little detail piece here, which I'm going to just bring up to round about there. I love using the roundabout method of heights. I think about there should do it. Okay, and I'm going to come back to that once I've done some of the work with these pillars because now it's time to actually do some pillar. Thank you, Rob, for your kind words. As an Irishman, I find your diddly diddly accent offensive. As an Irishman, you shouldn't be using a computer. You know that. You should be off attending to the potato harvest. Oh God, the potato harvest failed. What are we going to eat this year? It's going to be terrible. Okay, and I'm going to bring this part here up to a random height. So I'm just going to extrude it a little bit. And then bring it over like so. Right, now then, over here, I've got two pillars that I'm going to be placing down on this part. So I need to build the bottom parts of the pillars first. That's a good point, actually, yes. Why I, man, I am from Liverpool. He's just a, someone in the thing, so like my Irish accent isn't particularly good, because it's more of a diddly-diddly Irishman accent. 
more of a whole kind of leprechauns and everything's kind of you know lucky charms job there we go right we need to make this shape here this is what we start with and I'm going to give it a radius of one meter I'm going to give it a height of one meter just to start off with I'm going to give it one height segment 18 sides is fine convert to edible poly and I do believe Rob's inferring his Irish roots are taking a hold of him more like he's taking a hold of Irish roots and pulling up his potatoes okay and I'm going to stretch this out to about 1.2 by 1.2 meters I think or no 2.2 meters by 2.2 meters it's quite an epic scaled thing alright and I'm going to align that just using the align tool to this but I'm not going to align it on every axis so I'm not going to align it on the Z axis for example right now I can do some minor modifications to this now at the minute it's only 2.2 .2 by 2 so let's change it to 2.2 .2 on this one there we go that way it's a bit wider because we need this piece here at the bottom and I'm going to convert this to an edible poly and what I'm going to do next is just select these edges here I'm kind of working upside down here but I need to so now I can just do a chamfer I don't want a big chamfer just a nice little one make sure I've got all the edges I have that's good now I can take off the top part here and that part there and then if I select this bit I can get rid of that part there as well now I'm going to attach the cylinder to this kind of frame I have here not the other way around <laughs> and now if I select here and here as carefully as I possibly can I can bridge between the two and hopefully not make an awful mess no that looks okay I can always repair it later on anyway if I have to press A for angle snap get the rotate tool out 180 degrees and then just embed it to the point where this piece literally starts sinking into the ground there we are so I'm going to have that one there and that one there let's make a direct copy of the two Okay, that gives us a nice base to work from. Now then let's have a look at the heights of these parts. So I'm just going to bring it over temporarily. And if I just flip these over whilst holding shift, 180 degrees again. Just until they embed into the top there. Okay, now we know where this is supposed to be. What I'm going to do is take this polygon here, control I and just delete the rest of it because I don't need the rest of it at the moment actually yeah there we are alright 
next. I'm going to attach all these fellows here together. Reason being, we don't need to make elaborate collars. We're not make collars, columns. We're not making cathedral-style pillars here. What I mean by that is, if you've ever been to a cathedral, especially one in Britain, you'll see that the whole kind of Masonic influence on them is pretty strong. Especially when you look at the whole kind of master apprentice pillars that you tend to get in most of the big cathedrals, um, and you tend to get some really kind of ornate carving going on, often in diagonals, which is really nice but we're not going to recreate that here. These are supposed to be smooth pillars. Bridge. Bridge, and we can cut out those parts there if we don't need them as well. Now what I'm going to do is take the two pillars that I've created here and rotate them 90 degrees. and then I'm going to deposit them on top of this platform over here. Now as you can see they're a little bit far apart so they're not going to quite work here. So all I'll do is I'll just move the two parts closer together and then they do. Marvellous thing. Just make sure they're not hovering. We don't want hovering pillars. Okay. Grab here. Bring them up into place. There we go. So we're starting, as you can see now, to get the shape of this together. Now, where this one meets. I'm just going to grab this part here and then cap it like so and then I'm going to be able to just add some extra detail into this as I go up because I do have an archway that I have to produce that comes across there. Now we can see the arch actually goes from there so what I'm going to do is build the detail coming down rather than up. So, what I'm going to do is be a bit cunning here. I'm going to bring this down just until it's intersecting over those pieces and I'm going to lower the pillars into place once I'm done. Because these are supposed to be quite short, stumpy pillars. So again, just a detail layer that I'm going to put on here. I'm going to use the bevel tool again. Now this time I can actually try and cut myself a shape like that. Just working on nice little insert shapes. Just trying to go with something that's going to work here always worthwhile if you live near somewhere that's got kind of a traditional architectural church rather than a modern kind of clapboard churches that I know that some countries tend to have. It's really worthwhile getting a good look at some of these designs. And they work really, really well in fictional based things like this. It's kind of mausoleum-like. Raiders of the Lost Ark-like, even, you know? It's quaint. Some of you might even say. Okay, like that. Next. Grab my pillars. and try and move them down on just one axis rather than on two. OK. 
Okay, and then in here. And I'm just going to use my scale tool just to increase the size of these polygons a bit. Add a little bit of shape there. Just grab here, 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 and here. And do a quick loop. And then a quick chamfer. There we go. Now we haven't got any smooth on this yet, which is why it looks a little bit chunky down the bottom there, but don't worry about it. We will institute some smooth soon. Okay, we're not going to do any more work up here until we've actually got the kind of fluted shape coming across from here that we need to get. And we're not going to get that until I built it off this. There we are. Now, what I need to do here is just go through the middle of this, do a connect, bring it straight to one end, like so. Because I don't need these parts over here for a start. There we go. Next, I'll just cap this. I can then extrude it straight along. Like that. Just looking at these shapes again. What I'm going to do is take out these middle parts, just here. There we are. Just have a quick check, see if there's any questions coming in on the forums. Nothing good. That means that people either aren't aware that I'm doing this or don't care. So that makes my job a teeny bit easier. Click OK there. Right, so I've got this separate part here. Now in there, I'm going to delete this part. Not having any levels of undo set up on my Mac is a bit of a pain in the bum, but I'm not going to go back and fix it right now because I can't be bothered. Okay, and I'm going to attach this section here. Because as you see, I need that part there as well. go from here to here and just do a bridge and here to here and do the same now then inside this piece here it tends to be slightly more complicated than I will just use a bridge unfortunately or a cap even I can put a cap in but then I'm gonna have to go in and kind of trim it to the shape that I want and you'll notice that we've got weird things going on here. So, let's get rid of that. We didn't quite get rid of all the inside pieces anyway. Alright, let's try it now.
There, that's a much tidier cap. And now I can cut it. And I'm going to try and cut it as logically as I can. My Wacom's fallen under the table somewhere and I can't find it, so... We don't have to cut all of these. We don't have to cut all the way along. We just have to cut some logistical segments so that 3ds Max is able to basically not bend our polygons. Think of it as trying to make things as easy as you can for 3ds Max. Sometimes it does things for you, so we're going to do things for 3ds Max, you know? There we go. So we cut that shape there, yeah? Which is quite an easy shape as well, which is good. <sighs> Next. Could probably do with running a very small chamfer right down the middle there. And also, kind of feeding and incorporating this part into the back segment there. So, this is basically going to be lying on top of these slabs. So let's get these slabs to the right height. Let's bring that up to about there. So what's going to happen is this is going to rest back on this and on there. Now we need to get rid of the back of this piece. There we are. And then we can recap the entire segment. Like so. Uh, to, yeah, I'm just checking that I'm doing this correctly. We've got a third piece that's going to come all the way into about there, so... Oh, we're okay though, because that part there isn't actually fluted or neat. Just bring this straight back, just until we hit the intersection point there. And then this one here. There we go. My god, Undo actually worked that time. Yeah, that's fine. Perspective zoom. Because there isn't actually any real detail goes on on that back arch piece anyway. Okay, we can get rid of these parts here that we're not looking at now. Just so I know that they're out of the way. Could be a pillar there, but I think I've decided against using it in the end. I think we've kind of got enough pillars here, really, for what we need. Now, what I need to do up here is start separating pieces off a little bit. We have this big piece here. So... Remember what I said about not really being too concerned about the whole tidying up business, and we're still not. So I'm just going to go into my bridge tool. Probably just bridge the wrong piece there. Okay. You 
You'll notice I'm not using any shortcuts, just so you can see the kind of long way that I do some of this. Okay, now I need to create some detail pieces in here. And I'm going to try and create them so they fit in with these pieces over here a little bit as well. So let's go into the bevel. I mean, I don't know what your view is on the piece. I don't know how long you're going to have the piece in shot for, or even in fact if you are going to have the piece in shot. But if you do, then cool. All I'm doing basically is just matching this up to the piece I already built. Because obviously the architect would probably use a fairly uniform building design, <laughs> unless, and this is a very valid point incidentally, unless it was built over a very long period of time. And when you're looking at palatial architecture, which is what this is more or less, it normally isn't. It's normally built as one big happy piece for one member of the royal family. There we go. That gives us that detail piece which fits in with that other piece quite nicely as well. Right now, over here. Yeah, it's true. They do only have like two or three shapes of chisel. My grandfather was an architect and he was a very, very, very good one. I was always quite sad I never became an architect. But, as I've said many times, often with a grimace on my face, uh, oh, ring. Um, architects at the time, especially in Great Britain, when you went to university, one of the first things they did was give you a colour blindness test. And they said to you, are you colour blind? And they gave you the test, and if you failed the colour blindness test, you weren't becoming an architect. And that's about as simple as it gets. Probably want to cut these pieces up here a little bit, so I'm going to ring them. And I'll do another two connects in here. Now you can clean it down and remove any polygons you don't want later on. I just need these polygons for when it comes to building the arch piece I'm going to be doing later on. Okay, now this is the door. So let's bring the door across. Yeah, I actually did. Someone's just talking about colour blindness in the IRC channel at the moment. And his dad did electronics. Yeah, you can do electronics, but reading resistor values is an absolute pain in the backside. I mean, really serious pain in the backside as well. There we go. Um, I did electronics for a while, and it was just a case of I had to give up. It was just farcical. There was no way I could ever continue being an architect. I mean, being doing electronics, not being an architect. Couldn't do that either. <laughs> right. Yeah, resistor values are absolute nuisance. Right, what I have to do is get all these parts here now up to that height there, which is quite easy. Start with this one. And we're going to just extrude this straight up. You can actually make it as an electrician if you can find a kind of method of uh, doing the um, reading of resistor values. It's just I couldn't. I could never work the damn thing out. Just looked at it mystified, you know. It was quite funny because people always thought the idea of colourblind electronics was hilarious, and it really isn't. It's just an accident waiting to happen, a really bad industrial accident. Make sure we get these all at the right level. Otherwise it's going to look a little bit bonky, to be honest.
All right. Check the ortho. I love ortho. It makes all your models look crap. Yeah, yeah. The guy, uh, quite a kid, son, and I see like he used to get his dad used to get his mother to stick um the resistors to a piece of paper and write the value on it. That only works to a certain degree. You can't kind of take that to work and work on the fly with that, unfortunately. Right, I've moved this piece across because I need a central pivot point for the um, archways. Because all the archways obviously are pivoting from the same spot to go up to the ceiling to look all magnificent and ornate. Okay, now I need to attach that to these. And I'll probably attach that as well. There we go. Now, I don't want to move all these pieces across. I only want to move two thirds of them, which is why I've done it this way. Okay, and then I'm going to hinge from edge, pick my hinge, and it's going to be this one. And eight segments should be enough. Let me see, one, two, three. I should do nine segments. Click OK, and then delete there. Now, what I can do over here <laughs> is basically start doing the tidying up process, which needs to be done in order to make this work. So I'm going to clear out these back facing polys here. Like so. Not worried about these ones. Not even remotely. Now then this piece here which is going to come up just select here and here, do an extrude. And bring this back. Just line it up with the top of this. Like so. And then I can delete these two inside polygons. There and there. Now then, this next part requires a little bit of deming do, a little bit of pluck. Oh, I didn't see someone's been. Uh, oh no, no one's talking in local. I thought Robert left me an amusing and somewhat rude anecdotal message, but he hadn't. Okay, and just bridge those together, just so that I can get this polygon here, which I want to move upwards. So I'm going to just clone to an element, and then get rid of the original one. I'm not even going to read the comment that Rob has just made in local. I can assure you it was horrendous and terrible, and everything that we expect from young Rob. So, hey, Rob, what's the name of that shop you work at again, down in Leicester? War Games Inc. or something, isn't it? Pretty sure he said it was War Games Inc. War Games Inc. in Loughborough. There we go. Now then, the reason I mention that is because, actually, and this isn't just an, uh, a shout out to me good pal Rob here, is because I use a lot of reference models when I'm doing 3D. Um, I find them useful, especially for doing, you know, either mechanical detail work or if I'm doing um, 
sci-fi pieces kind of for a hobby. I mean, I was talking with him last night about a piece that I quite fancy doing. And the reason I mention Rob's shop is because if you ask Rob very, very nicely, now, Rob, what is your web address for that shop? Come on, hurry up and type it up, for God's sake. So I'm getting bored now. I'm going to start talking about something else randomly at any second while I'm doing this. What I'm doing, by the way, if you're wondering, is I'm creating... I don't know what the top part of these is. Is it like a... It's not a portico. I can't remember what it's called. Someone will tell me, and I'll be horribly embarrassed that I can't remember what it is anyway. Right then, anyway, the website for this place, and I'll even tell you that this is a good idea internationally as well as nationally inside the UK, is War Games Inc. And the reason it's good is because if you go there... Rob, and you need to ask him by name by the way, Rob there, will give you a fantastically good discount on all the good models, which is what you want really. And it's quite nice because they seem to cover, uh, I think, all the major ranges, which is quite good. Just uh, cutting away some bits I don't need, just to save myself getting confused. And I say this because, I mean, I've used them in the past. Because one of my son, well, two of my sons play Warhammer. So I've gotten parts off young Rob in the past anyway. And uh, I've also bought parts off them to use as reference pieces. And they're a very good little shop. Death or cake? Hmm, cake. No, wait, death. Uh, no, wait, cake. Right then, so we've got this shape here, and now I can fill in this top part here. So I'll just do a cap. And what I'm going to do is, rather than inset this piece, which I can just project an image onto, which is quite nice, yeah, what I'm going to do instead is just extrude out, or bevel out, depending on what you prefer, this part, just a small bit. I'll just use the Select tool, rather than the Select and the Move tool. Like so. Now, if you're going to be using Edge Checks, which is a tool by... Uh, fantastic chap whose name I've completely forgotten but go look it up on Google first search you get will be 3D Palace second search will be the name of the website of the guy that makes it um, anyway if you go there fantastic product really do love edge checks okay just extrude that out a little bit just so Add some contemporary shapes into this. Get rid of these parts. As I said at the beginning, it's a mix, really, a kind of 16, 1700s French kind of pompadour architecture and a kind of classical, modernistic, not brutalist, because brutalist is just awful, and all brutalist architects need to be taken into a field somewhere. And taught the error of their ways, but uh, maybe modern. Not 60s modern, but maybe 90s modern. Ring. Need to do a single connect this time, not two. And one there, one there, and one there initially. Inset. And apply. And same again there. Because now we're getting to the point where we're going to start trying to put things together more. 
Now you'll notice we don't have a lot of detail going on at the top here, but we're going to fix that shortly. First, let's get this done. This is particularly good if you want to texture in some pictures, kind of Sistine Chapel style. Well, not even Sistine Chapel, really. A lot of 17th century, um, a lot of 17th century places, like palaces and so on, tended to have paintings up there. They didn't have television, you know, so they'd just gently move their heads from one side to another. Okay. Now we can get rid of everything else over here, because we don't need it, because now we're just working on this piece. Which is coming out pretty nicely, actually. Now then. Do I need that piece at the back? Yeah, I probably do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two pieces here, here, well, here and here together. So, what I need to do is grab there, there and there, there, there and there. And then I'm going to start using the beveling tool just to get some detail in. It's quite nice doing this with a Wacom, if you can ever find your Wacom, because the kids have borrowed it and probably used it as a crayon somewhere, not realising it's worth about 80 quid. Thanks, kids. When you're working on both sides at once, it really does pay to take some time and some attention to what you're doing. Obviously, I don't have that benefit, so I'm just doing what I can to try and keep the shapes uniform as possible. I don't want to intersect into the pillars, for example. Now you'll notice that these parts here probably aren't going to fit over each other very well. So what I'm going to do is select here and just grow this one back to about there. Then if I delete this off, select these two parts. Now you're probably thinking, oh god, what are you doing with some sort of vestige of horror? Don't worry, even though it's bent down like this at the moment, it won't be for long. We grab here and ring it around, do a connect, and I'm just going to slide it to about there. And then just use my scale tool. Scale it out a little bit like that. Then I can just start moving them until they're straight. Oh, I say, that really is jolly clever. Oh, well done, that man. So I like to give myself little awards of uh, the style of a gentleman's club room of the 1920s. There we go. Drop back into perspective. Okay, let's see, that's not too bad. It needs to be fixed on this side though, as you can see. And this is the back view, I believe. So, as I don't have a hotkey assigned for the back at the moment. There are other ways of doing it, but this gives me a break as well from having to think too much which is always a good thing. Well, funny, if you put those kind of curves in, you're really heading for a more kind of classical Egyptian style of architecture. They used to be quite in for that kind of sloping look. Roman architecture was never sloping like that. It was always straight ups and downs as much as possible. Okay. 
Uh, then in this one, haven't really put any. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's enough room here. Three. Don't ever worry that you're repeating patterns. Repeating patterns is fine. I'm not going to tell you what they're talking about in the uh, in the chat area. It's nearly as bad as 3D Palace IRC, though. I say nearly. Okay. Thank God for word fill today. There we are. That gives us that shape there. Yes, the swear filter is amazing. I love how they've been impressed by the word filter. It's disturbing. Okay, now down here I'm going to grab this part because I need some wall. And I believe this and this will both bridge into one piece. Interesting question there actually from Rob, because I was doing the amusing accent and so he's kind of got hung up on the old idea of public schools now. He's saying fags and public schools. Now Americans, you know, are gonna look at the word fags and they're probably gonna get completely the wrong connotations of this to a degree, depending on which school it was. But the fagging system was basically like a kind of planned bullying slash slave system by the British public school system. And what you'd do is you'd have your fag, which was normally some poor little guy who was normally in the first year or some such, and he'd get assigned to a prefect and basically have to do all the crappy jobs for them. Sometimes getting paid, sometimes not getting paid. It amuses me that this has kind of became a slang in America for someone of a homosexual persuasion. Because of course there was never any homosexual activity in British privates and public schools. It was all just a fallacy. <laughs> right. We do get onto some bizarre topics of conversation, don't we, while we're doing this? Hopefully, however, you can see where I'm going with this and what I'm doing. At least I hope you can. Bring the wall out. Okay, because that way we can just kind of locate it into a wall unit or whatever. Now then up here, at the top, never really got the detail that I needed to out of this. But I can do that now, just by using a bevel. Got to be careful how much bevel, obviously. If I use too much, it's going to look silly. Quite funny, I was watching um oh some Chinians. Nah, that's bloomin' hilarious that is. Because there's two versions of St. Chinians. There's the version of St. Chinians which has just been made, uh, I'd say within the past couple of years, which featured a Russell Brand and various like fashionable females and stuff. And there's the St. Chinians which was kind of based on the real girls' public schools and private schools of the nineteen twenties. Just a vicious, violent nun ran affair. And if you ever get a chance, go and look for the original St. Chinian's movies. Because I swear they are the funniest damn thing you'll ever see. Absolutely hilarious. Alright, we can now start attaching some more of these pieces together. There we go. And I'm going to want to start. really bringing these pieces into each other a little bit. So I'm going to grab here and here and just bridge those two in. Yeah, exactly, the carry-on times. Well, Centrinians was kind of pre-carry-on times, really, wasn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong, the carry-on films were good, but uh, 
Centurions was definitely pre Carry On era. Fantastic films, too. Yeah, Barbara Windsor, that was Carry On, definitely. I don't know, I was never that much of a fan of Barbara Windsor, though. I know that's kind of tantamount to heresy in England. There's a good chance I'll get stoned. But, uh, never was really a great fan of Babs Windsor. I know that doesn't mean I was a fan of, uh, well, no, I was a fan of all of them, actually. Just I didn't used to find Barbara Windsor that hilarious. Never could work out why. Right, anyway, I need to extend this part off the side here. It's like having a one-way conversation, I would imagine, for you guys who are, weren't there in the live session when I was recording. So I apologise. Basically, what they're asking in the live channel is if Centurions was akin to the British Carry On movies. And, uh, no. Much better. Seriously, the classic ones. Not the, not the awful modern one, but the classic ones. Brilliant. There we go, bring that up to there, and then stick another bevel on. Like so, which gives us those shapes there. Okay. Next, I'm going to take the door piece that I have here. And start cleaning it up a little bit. What I have to do here is select this one. Get in nice and close. Like so. And then I can do a connect. I should, look at that, be able to keep it to about there. And then I can inset on the middle part once I've duplicated the middle part here across. So I'll just stick a symmetry on it. Now the good thing is that my actual pivot for this is completely off. So there we go. So I have to work out which axis I'm doing it on, which is probably the X. Oh god, I've just done it by selected. There. Symmetry. Now I have to grab my mirror axis. And as you see, our door slowly appears as I pull it backwards. There we go. Now on the top here. Now remember I made that small overhang that we need to get rid of. There we are. And what I'm going to do now is just <laughs> take this and again use symmetry on it. I think I'm going to need to add in the pillars first. There we go. Make sure it's on the correct axis. I love doing this. Look, you see? Turkish. Uh, let's see, right about 1800s. And here's our version. See, it all comes together, somewhat like that cigar smoking chappy out of the A-Team. Okay, just check it all out. Yep, that's fine. 
Now then, front view port, left view port. Let's affect our pivot. Bring it down to about there. Like so. Because of course we haven't finished yet. That would be just silly, wouldn't it? Believing that we'd finished. We haven't. Okay, and now put that there. Just working out where this piece fits in relation to that. Because I need to get this bit right. Flip pivot only. Make sure that's right down there. And this needs to go all the way to there. Like that. I didn't say I'd be making a boring doorway, did I? Okay, let's finish some of these detail areas. And that, for the moment, until I've finished having some lunch, is part two of our portal. Which isn't too bad, actually. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, in the next part, we'll be expanding upon the whole idea, because at the moment, really, it could be anything. It could be a mausoleum, it could be whatever the hell. So we're going to make it work after that. We're going to expand upon the idea, make it pretty, okay? So until then, see you in the next part, and bye-bye uh, for now.